There is a severe lack of good tree farms out there. Everywhere you look online, you see some very lackluster designs. And today, I plan on fixing that by creating a tree farm that is fast, small, and can harvest up to five different log types. So without further ado, I got started on the main core of the farm. A tree farm core has a few primary parts, namely the bottom section, the leaf crushers, and the main log pusher. And with this knowledge, I started with the bottom section. Now the bottom section for this farm is much harder than one might suspect. You need to remove the log here instantly and have the system be ready to handle another tree in less than a third of a second, which basically means zero ticks. For those who don't know what zero ticks do, they essentially just allow pistons to extend and start retracting blocks instantly. We can abuse this behavior to retract the log as soon as the tree grows, and then further process the log through additional movements. No one really cares about that boring garbage though, so instead, let's get wiring. And some 30 minutes later, I came up with this amazing creation. It can now harvest a log in less than a third of a second. However, we still have an entire tree to worry about. Remember, we have to deal with five different tree types, and we'd preferably want the optimal speed for each individual one. To do this, we can use a honey slime double piston extender. Unfortunately, it takes twice as long to finish compared to the bottom section, essentially ruining the work I had just done. However, there is a silver lining to this problem, as there are only two tree types that can run at this speed, that being oak and birch. We can extend the first set of pistons in the double extender to cut the reset time in half, and because of changes in 1.15, this won't block tree growth at all. So now that we have a defined concept in place, I can get to wiring. This stupid thing took way longer to design than expected, just due to me wanting to make the best possible extender. While I don't think I succeeded at that, this thing works and can achieve what I set out to do. The last thing left in this core is the leaf crushers. Now, this is literally just an observer stack and the main log pusher wire, so just doing this will work. And after all that, this core is done. All we need to do is put everything together. So, starting with the bottom section, we can add the main log pusher on top, followed by the leaf crushers, and then additional things like the switches and further bottom wire. And with that, we have our core completely finished. So I know I've made this entire design process look pretty easy and straightforward, but to be completely honest with you, that cannot be farther from the truth. It has taken over a year to design this core, and that's for many reasons. Firstly, I got pretty lazy, and then I got extremely busy creating some other videos that you might have seen. And lastly, I have designed over a hundred different iterations to come to the single core that sits in front of you currently. So, with all that work I put into this project, I began to feel a sense of resentment, making me not really motivated to finish it. But I still needed to make the log transport and blast chamber, so I decided to do something no one else has done before. Outsource labor. Enter Lintex, a wonderful redstoner who would embark on a horrible quest to attempt to finish this farm. Now, the log transport and blast chamber seem pretty easy. Just push the log into chamber and make it go boom. However, that was much harder than you might expect. Mainly because Lintex and I are tryhards and decided to try and put all these log streams into one TNT chamber, making this farm very pretty. However, after 30 different TNT chamber designs and literal hours spent debugging and fixing stupid issues, we came to the conclusion that we are both way too lazy for this. So the trend of outsourcing labor continues to another man, or rather, hamster. Now, this hamster is probably one of the best redstoners I know, and trusting him with completing these chambers seemed like an obvious decision. However, what I did not expect was for him to get help from another person. This other person ironically goes by the name of Lol, as if this entire design process wasn't a huge joke already. A anyway, that doesn't matter. After a bit, they both got to work, and on my birthday, they gave me this. Now, if this seems familiar, that's because I've teased it at the very start of the video. However, this was not the final design, no no. They gave me a very buggy mess to clean up. The chambers were breaking, the logs didn't blow up in time, and some very weird things occurred. Uh, what the heck? As you can imagine, debugging other people's wiring is hard. I'm curious as to why the TNT does not blow up these logs, but when I turn off the system and change it to this, and I turn it back on, it blows up the logs again. Anyway, after about two days of bug fixing and crying, I had finally fixed all the various issues, and now the only thing left was to test the farm. So with that, I got started. Testing each individual tree type took some time. However, after about four days of running the farm, I got these results. This farm can go as fast as 54,000 logs per hour, and it can do this without even scratching your server performance, as it is extremely lag efficient, running at 1.5 MSPT and my Ryzen 5 5600X. However, this farm gets even better. Better. Given its sleek dimensions and literally unbreakable blast chambers, you can make this farm anywhere in the world, whilst also not breaking the bank, as it is relatively cheap. If you want to learn more, further information about this farm will be in the world download, which is located on my Discord server. And lastly, if you want to learn how to create wonderfully efficient farms like this, maybe give this video a watch. Anyways, I'm out. 
Bye-bye. By the way, all credits are linked in the description.